Welcome to the Brave Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Tanya Lin, founder of Sistership Circle and author of Open Your Heart and The Art of Leading Circle. I'm the mother of two girls and eight on the Enneagram, aka The Challenger, happily married to my business partner, Brent, love connecting with nature, and have put in well over 10,000 hours circling with other women. On this podcast, we will explore how to embody the brave woman so that you can take action on your dreams and desires, unapologetically speak your truth, and live life on your own terms. Grab a seat and a cup of tea and let's get started. Wow, it's been a while. I was supposed to record this back in November. It is now May, so it's been six months, almost six months. And what I find absolutely fascinating is how relevant (laughs) this conversation today is today. (laughs) Like, of course, of course, this was the topic of the last season's episode. (laughs) And yet I'm recording it now. And I think it's really important that I finish up season four, instead of just ignoring the fact that I completely dropped the ball. And, you know, there, there's, there's always these lessons for us. Last year was really hard. Um, and I just didn't have it in me to finish this episode. And now that I look at the topic, I can see that I was resisting and um, avoiding having this conversation. Uh, and it didn't feel fully feel, I guess, authentic, or um, there were some things I think I needed to get to then have this conversation and those things have happened. So trusting in the divine timing, trusting in the flow. And I'm really excited that I get to complete season four and then next week kick off season five. The topic today is around getting your needs met in relationship. And where I want to start is actually with the conversation that we had in one of our mastery calls. And this conversation was co-led by two of our sisters. And Jean Viev is one of our incredible master facilitators. And she came up with, or she found this Peace around the ego versus the eco. And I want to create this context for the conversation of getting our needs met while still being in relationship with others. And again, where I was going with this back in November was more of my marriage. And so that will be woven in, but I love creating this larger circle context and this larger um, collective context of it's not just about being in relationship with your partner in your marriage or your uh, partnership, but it's about how do you get your needs met in any relationship? How do you get your needs met while also being in community? And so John Viev found this book by Bill Plotkin, and he's a renowned psychologist, author, wilderness guide, and he describes several stages of human development, including what he terms spiritual adulthood. And so I want to define these two terms for this conversation. And the spirit, this idea of spiritual adulthood is really important because here at the Brave Woman Podcast, we're talking a lot about the heroine's journey and what it looks like for us to be brave and to step into our leadership. So um, this this idea, and I think I even talked about spiritual adulthood back in um, season three. So that would be a great uh, 
I, I just take you on the whole heroine's journey for season three. But um, let's define these two terms here and then we could go deeper. So we have egocentric and ecocentric. And so what he says is that for egocentric adolescents are individuals who are in the process of discovering their identities. This stage is marked by a focus on personal identity, ego development, and social recognition. Adolescents often seek validation and acceptance from their peers and society. They are in the process of understanding their individuality and often grapple with questions related to self-worth, self-identity, and social roles. During this stage, there might be a sense of restlessness, identity crisis, and a search for belonging, also characterized by consumerism and me, myself, and I. And then on the other side of the spectrum is ecocentric. And that perspective is to become a spiritual adult is to recognize that our personal growth is intricately woven into the wellness of the collective. We only ever truly mature spiritually when we acknowledge our interdependence with the earth, all of the non-human creatures and our fellow human beings. Spiritual adults understand that humans are not separate from nature, but an integral part of it, and often engage in activities that contribute positively to the well-being of the earth and future generations. They have a strong sense of purpose, are in touch with their authentic selves, and are actively involved in co-creating a better world. So when we are transitioning into spiritual adulthood, it's really shifting from egocentric to ecocentric. And that is a pilgrim, pilgrimage within ourselves. That really truly is part of the heroine's journey. And so we shift from the narrow corridors of the ego self to the vast landscapes of collective wellness. And circle really is the place where we get to practice this. And so we can look at this as the me and the we. The egocentric is the me, myself, and I. And the ecocentric is the we, the collective. And so as human beings, who most human beings have not actually gone on their spiritual initiation, they haven't gone into spiritual adulthood. We can see this. We can see this in the immaturity of most people, immaturity of the collective, that most people are stuck in the me, myself, and I. And that is really influencing then our relationship with the earth. It's showing us why we are so divided as, uh, as humanity, right? There, there's just so much separation. There's so much divide. It's so much focused on me. And so when we go into relationship, whether that is in a single partnership or a marriage, or we go into community, um, we're constantly grappling with, how do I get my needs met, right? How do I stand for me inside of the we? And there's this constant battle. There's this constant conflict that I always see in all of the circles that I lead, all of the communities that I'm part of. That is the crisis is how do we balance that? How do we honor both the me and the we? And most people are so focused on the me and they're protecting their ego that it's really hard to step into the ecocentric conversation, which is a co-creative conversation. For us to really be in community, we must put our egos aside and be in co-creation. And the way to do that is through trust, right? And this is the thing that comes up in every single circle is a fear of trusting, a fear of getting burned, a fear of getting hurt, right? It's hard to lean into the circle. It's hard to lean into and feel like the community's really got my back because we've gotten burned so many times. So we have to step into 
sovereignty, right? And the sovereignty is the foundation of authenticity. It's our understanding of our own worth and autonomy. It's the unwavering belief in our unique voice, our unique perspective and purpose. And so as feminine leaders, we must have sovereignty as the foundation, right? In which we build authentic nurturing spaces. This is what allows us to hold the sacred container for others' growth while respecting their individual journeys. So we need that sovereignty piece. And the sovereignty really is a self-trust. I trust myself first and foremost. And then I have to trust in a higher power. And then I can trust others. It's like this triad that happens of trust. And so sovereignty finds its fullest meaning in the tapestry of interconnectedness. We are not isolated islands, but we are interconnected threads in the fabric of our existence. So it's essential to recognize the shared humanity that unites us all and understand that the wellness of the individual is intricately tied to the wellness of the community, of the collective, right? It's embracing that interconnectedness that we experience collective healing and transformation. And this is how we get all needs met. So coming back to this topic of how do I get my needs met without being this self-centered narcissist and still honor the collective. Me, my needs are equally as important. So what happens, and this is where I am constantly getting stuck in my relationship, my marriage, is feels like this competition of needs. We go into this scarcity. We go into this ego protection, right? This safeguarding and this defense really of, I have to make sure that I get my needs met. And if he gets his needs met, I'm not going to get my needs met. And then we are in this battle, right? So historically, here's what's going on is that women were the ones who were in charge of making sure that the needs were met, right? Taking care of the kids' needs, taking care of the husband's needs, right? And where we got conditioned as women is to put our needs last. We did not put on the oxygen mask first. Our patriarchal society taught us somehow, I don't know where it came in, but that we have to be martyrs. It's about being the self-sacrificing martyr. And actually, as I say that, it's like, well, <laughs> women did not have rights. It was all about the man. It was all about, you know, making sure that you took care of your man so that you could exist. You can be taken care of, right? And so it was this self-sacrifice that had to happen because patriarchy said that a woman on her own was inherently unworthy. So that gets deeply embedded in us. And so when we start showing up in group, in relationship, we're conditioned to sacrifice our needs, right? And so now as we're starting to awaken to our power as women, as we're starting to find our voice, as we're starting to realize that our needs do matter and that, yeah, maybe we should put the oxygen mask on first. There's this underlying anger, resentment, mistrust. It's like, I got to fight for my needs. That's what I experience in my marriage is I literally have to fight. And there's a difference between being an advocate for your own needs, being an advocate because you're coming from the sovereignty and a deep trust. But there's something deep down inside me that says, ah, are you worthy? 
do you really deserve to get your needs met? And that's where I get stuck. That's the place I have to keep going, is back into childhood and looking deep within at the part, that little girl, the little part in me that felt like her needs didn't matter. And ultimately what that came down to is that need for love and to be deeply seen. There's this longing for this really deep connection. And that's the part, that part of me, the little girl who didn't feel fully loved. And not that my parents weren't loving me, not that I wasn't taken care of, but there was some question mark, some doubt. And that's what comes up and says, you better fight for it because you don't believe that you're actually going to get it because this part of you does, doesn't believe that you are worthy. That is the inner work. And so in coming into spiritual adulthood, I have to claim the queen because the queen has grown up, right? The sovereignty of the queen. She's not a princess anymore. She's not looking for mommy and daddy to take care of her. The spiritual adult has crossed the threshold. And in our culture, we don't have these rites of passages to help us cross over into spiritual adulthood. We're not really truly initiated, right? From the maiden to the mother to the crone in our society. It's missing. And so, because we don't have these sacred spaces, we don't have these sacred rites of passages done in community, we don't really feel held by community. So there's that rub there too of, do these people really truly have my back? Will I truly get my needs met? Or is everyone, you know, Lord of, a, Lord of the Flies trying to fend for themselves? And that is really capturing the essence of America, right? Which influences all the other cultures in the world is this Lord of the Flies, rugged individualism of you have to fight for your survival. And that is an aggressive pattern, right? Because there's the lack of trust, the lack of connection in that higher power that's going to hold us. We're not in that co-creation with the divine. We've lost touch with that interconnectedness, which is the divine that flows within all of us. We were taught that there's this power, it's a masculine power that's outside of ourselves, but it's higher than us in that we're less than. Versus we're all connected with this universal energy we're all divine. The divine is living within all of us. And so then it's this, yeah, I'm co-creating with this higher power, the universe, but I am the universe. I am a mini universe. You are a mini universe. So that's not embedded, right? That we've been disconnected from that. And so there's a couple different ways that we can look at this. And, and so I want to talk about circle. And then I want to talk about relationship more, but this really is such a deep conversation, such a potent conversation for us as leaders who want to potentially lead community, right? Like we have to understand this and to be sovereign in our marriages, in our relationships, in our partnerships. That's what I want. And yet it's like we have patriarchy that's kind of making it really uncomfortable, making it really difficult for us to really stand in our sovereignty as women in relationship. So 
this just came up, and this is why I'm so glad that I'm doing this episode today versus five months ago, is one of our groups, five of the women did not show up at the call. And it was literally in the message thread, one by one, right after the other, saying, sorry, not going to make it, be there next week. <laughs> And so, of course, we have to speak up, right? And if you're a leader of a group, you're leading a group program, you're leading community, you can't step over the fact that five women decided that they weren't going to show up with no explanation, last minute, right? Okay, there's something for us to deal with. And there's some medicine here for us, right? There's nothing wrong. There's no one to blame. We don't have to feel guilty or ashamed or embarrassed about not showing up. But we do get to look at our impact on the group. There's an impact when we are part of a community and we don't show up, right? Because we are shifting back into ego. Me, myself, I, my needs, my self-care, my taking care of these things. But wait a second, have we considered the needs of the group? Have we looked at how we are all interconnected? We're all influencing each other. We're all impacting each other. That that has a huge impact. Five women not showing up has a big impact on the rest of the group, especially when it's left hanging, there's no explanation. There's no community. I mean, there is a communication, but the communication is just so I'm not going to be there. See you next week. So it's not completely ghosting, but we know what that feels like to have someone cancel. Doesn't feel good. Wondering if I did something wrong. Wondering if something's wrong with them. Wondering like the container gets really wobbly. Something's now in the space. So there was self-care that needed to happen, right? And this is the, this is the meat right here. One of the women asked, okay, so my question is, what do I do in this situation? I need to take care of myself. I really don't feel like going to the circle. I don't feel like showing up. So my first option is I recognize that I made a commitment and that what I resist persists. So if I show up, I'm going to get exactly what I need if I bring that to the circle and just participate. Or do I gracefully bow out, take care of myself? Or there's a third option, and that is I show up, camera off, and just listen. Because sometimes that's all I've got capacity for. Now, we can look at this as circle, being part of a circle, being part of a community, something that you committed to. You could also look at this as your marriage. <laughs> Do I want to actively engage in my marriage when I don't feel like it? Do I want to take a vacation or check out, right? Or do I want to kind of half be there, maybe just close my eyes and be in the room, but not interact? And I'm just thinking of the amount of times that that's how I wanted to show up, right? My marriage is just check out, but I'm, I'm physically here, but I'm not really there. And so here's the answer. Communication. And not just communication as in, sorry, I'm not going to be here. But it's a co-creative conversation. How do I honor the interconnectedness? in my communication. 
Okay, so what does this look like? I am completely wiped out. I've got a headache. I'm going to choose that third option. And I'm going to show up at the call, the circle call. But I don't really want to participate. I don't, I don't have it in me, right? I'm, I, can, I can listen. I can lay down with my camera off and listen. But I'm, I really can't engage. I can't share, you know. And maybe I can once I show up, but no, that's, that's where I'm at, right? So I show up and I voice that. I say, look, I don't got it in me. I can barely even get these words out of my mouth. I can barely get here. What I really need and what I really want is to just lie on my bed with the camera off and just listen to the call. Okay. I'm not the only one in this relationship though. What about the group? And so I asked the question, can I do that? Like not as in a permission, but in a, what can we co-create here? The facilitator, how does the, does, would this work for the circle? Like, how do we work this out? <clears throat> How do we honor me and my needs to just lie here? <laughs> and how do I honor the needs of the group? Is, and so what we're asking is, what do you need to support me in getting what I need? Both and. Both needs matter. The facilitator might say, okay, great. You could totally lie down. And if you want to opt out of the sharing, but I'm going to ask that you have your camera on. I don't care what you look like, but it would just allow me to know that you're actually there. Like I can see you, right? Maybe there's a check-in with the group. Is the group okay with that? Right. So if we truly want to be in relationship, we have to understand the interconnectedness. We have to understand the impact that we have in showing up or not showing up the way in which we're showing up. Right. So, yes, you can still get your needs met. And let's say that you decide that I'm not going to show up on the call. What, what do you need group? Hey, I'm, I just don't have it. Like I'm always there. You know that I'm committed. I just, I can't do it today. Is there anything that you need? And they might say, um, yeah, no, take care of yourself. Can you check in afterwards? Or can you make sure that you watch the recording within 24 hours, right? Whatever it is that there's this honoring of the both and it's the honoring of the interconnectedness. It's understanding that everything that I do has an impact on the relationship. There's, it, this is the law of cause and effect. Everything has an impact. Everything has an effect. When we can come into our relationships with this awareness and this level of honoring of the interconnectedness, then we can get our needs met. So what prevents us from doing that? Well, upset, right? I'm going to be in trouble. They're going to say no, right? Like this is where we have to step into our sovereignty of here's what I need. I'm standing in what I need and I'm also still honoring you. What do you need to support me in getting what I need? What's the both and here? Now. It would not 
be serving for the group to say, well, just suck it up and don't honor yourself, right? It's like, no, we're in a co-creation here. This is the key. So just a, a breath here, because this is, you know, this can, oh, this can bring up stuff. This brings up fears of disappointment, fears of being rejected, fears of guilt and embarrassment. Because that's all the things that came up when we had this conversation as a group for the women who didn't show up. But they all were able to really see that, yeah, I had an impact. So how do I do this differently next time? So we don't need to beat ourselves up. We don't need to make ourselves wrong. It's like, how do I do this better next time? And the honoring of the we, the me and the we. So this is the final episode of the season. And then we get to transition to season five, which I'm very, very excited for. But I want to bring it back to the season four intention. And that was being spirit led to follow the magic. And so when we shift into ecocentric, that is trusting in the universe, trusting in the higher power, trusting that I will be held. That's what it means to be a spiritual adult. I am recognizing my interconnectedness with all that is, understanding the law of cause and effect, understanding that I have a footprint with every word, every thought, every action that I take. And so in being spirit-led to follow the magic, I'm really stepping into that co-creation with the universe and shifting from egocentric to ecocentric. And when I look at the last five months, that is so what's happened. So much magic. I am feeling so amazing right now. And when we open up season five, I'll share more of an update and the journey that I've been on for the last five months. But this is truly the, the trusting that your needs will be met. So I want to end with the connection with the great mother because Mother's Day is right around the corner this weekend coming up and in honoring Mother's Day, for me, it's about honoring the great mother. The great mother archetype is the all loving, all encompassing spirit, mother spirit that holds us all. And when I tap into that energy of the divine mother, of the great mother, it's about trusting that all of my needs are provided for. The great mother provides for all of our needs to be met. Take a look at nature. Nature is abundant. There's no scarcity. There's no lacking in nature. That is our inherent nature. All of our needs are provided for. I've learned that at Burning Man, being on the playa, it's always the playa will provide. Mother Nature will provide. The Great Mother will provide. Can we bow down in reverence to that universal energy of the Great Mother? that all of our needs are provided for. If I'm coming from that place, I can relax the egocentric and step into the ecocentric, knowing that I am in a co-creation with the divine mother, with the great mother, and that all is provided for. I can surrender. I can let down my defense. I can let go of feeling like I have to fight for my needs, that it's a competition because there's scarcity. 
that if your needs get met, then mine won't, or if mine will, then yours won't. No, all of our needs are met. All of our needs are provided for by the Great Mother. So, if we want to truly manifest our desires, then we have to trust that they're already there and available for us. And so that is what I want to leave you with as we complete season four and move transition into season five is coming from that place of, I trust that all of my needs are provided for. And from that place, I can now step into ecocentric relationships. I can step into trusting in the interconnection that holds us all. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode and season four, and I'll see you in, in season five. You just listened to this show. I'd love for you to leave the Brave Woman podcast an honest review. Reviews help podcasts like this one grow, making it more possible for me to devote my time, energy, and money to its production. If you take a screenshot of your review and email it to support at sistershipcircle.com, we'll send you one of our archetype activations as a thank you gift. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it.